Dale, I periodically hear reference to the concept of civil authority. Could, could you explain a little bit about that and how that may apply to these kinds of claims? Yes, there is a, a provision in a lot of policies of loss due to the um, requirement of a civil authority. In other words, when the authorities shut down a business, they shut down a street, they shut down a city or something like that. So you're going to have to look at the exact terms of each policy to see um, if there is a virus exclusion in a policy, but yet there is coverage for uh, for a loss of operations due to the requirement or order of civil authority, which one of those would apply? How do they work up uh, one against another? We don't know. Manuscript policies will have to be looked at for their, uh, their own provisions as to how these things will apply. For people who may not be as familiar with the insurance industry, a manuscript policy is one that is specifically drafted for the insured? Yes, that's correct. That's, that's the term for uh, a large policyholder who has negotiating power with an insurance company over its, um, over its coverage. And uh, this, is <clears throat> this is something where the two sides work out the various forms of coverage. There are a lot of standard forms of coverage, particularly for the smaller businesses, but for a large hotel chain or cruise line, it's probably going to be uh, a manuscript, something that was negotiated at great length between the two parties. You mentioned reinsurance type claims. Can you explain to people who are watching what types of claims we're talking about there and how you see those issues playing out? Yes, uh, the reinsurance industry will be involved heavily without doubt because of the magnitude of the claims. And of course, the terms in a reinsurance contract are different than the terms of the insurance policy that it reinsures. So sometimes you have a conflict uh, between the nature of the coverage in the insurance policy that is underlying and that produces the claim and the coverage in in a reinsurance contract. Uh, I would strongly suspect that over the years, once reinsurers get involved, there may be questions and uh, disputes involving this and arbitrations come out of this as a result between insurers and reinsurers. You know, historically on huge claims such as this, Dale, the definition of occurrences and how the court interprets the number of occurrences has been an important issue. Do you see that as something that's going to be important as we move forward? I strongly suspect that it will. Um, and I think each type of policy, the specialty policies that deal with um, the out of the ordinary circumstances will come into play. For example, um, one of the thoughts is event cancellation insurance. Now, is the virus itself one occurrence or is every event, every, every concert, every um, show, every musical production that has to be canceled, is that a separate occurrence? I think you're gonna have to go back to the uh, individual policies to see how that's treated. And there may be some issues because this is what I've described as the black swan event that nobody really anticipated. Did the underwriters anticipate this and did they put provisions in there that defined whether the cancellation of a dozen concerts is one occurrence or is the cancellation of one occurrence of one concert an occurrence and as an underwriter you would anticipate probably a single event you you wouldn't really be thinking about concerts being canceled far and wide but maybe one concert canceled because of who knows whether the performer anything <clears throat> and an insurer can absorb one or maybe a dozen losses but can the same insurer absorb a hundred losses we don't know so this could have a big effect on uh, on the uh, solvency of an insurance company con uh, conceivably so just to kind of pursue that, um, you know, if, if the Rolling Stones are on tour and they're going to be doing 50 tours, the underwriter may anticipate that the weather will be such they're going to have to cancel one tour and price accordingly. But this is an instance where the entire 
the entire concert series has been canceled and there may be a loss of 50 different co concerts. Is that basically it? That's, that's exactly it, yes. So uh, is the insurer able to absorb that without going into their reinsurance? Do they have reinsurance? Do they have the capacity? Do they have the solvency to handle uh, um, 100 concerts being canceled? Eventually, there's going to be uh, claims being brought against the reinsurers. And again, for people who are not really versed in, in coverage, the reinsurers are the ones who, by way of a treaty or an agreement, agree to cover some of the losses that the insurance company has covered. Is that right? Exactly. Every company has reinsurance uh, for some reason or another at some level. Obviously, the big companies don't need it that much. <clears throat> but even a giant insurer um, wants to have protection in the case uh, there's a big, there's a Hurricane Katrina or something of that nature that wipes out uh, uh, thousands of homes, as one example. Um, and the reinsurance industry is there to respond, to smooth out the results, to enable companies to stay in business when there's... <clears throat> the unexpected, unanticipated large losses. In those kinds of claims, what are some of the issues that may arise that you might not ordinarily see under some of your basic early coverage claims between the insured and the insurer? The coverage for the policyholder, of course, is determined by the language in the insurance policy itself. But then the language as to how the reinsurance applies may be an entirely different situation. The reinsurance industry is one that uh, operates a little bit different in the relationship with its customer than you normally, than you normally have in the world of commerce. Um, <clears throat> I have treatises about reinsurance that say that uh, in a dispute, the arbitrators are required to look beyond the wording of the contract. It's an agreement of utmost good faith and you try to look at the intent of the drafters of the, of the contract at the time that it was drafted. But those things uh, have evolved through the uh, asbestos and environmental claims that we've seen over the last 20 or 30 years. What did they mean when uh, this contract was drafted in 1955 and nobody, nobody had heard of, uh, of the types of losses that are being presented today? So it, it goes back to that basic principle that insurance is, in fact, a contract. And one of the basic elements of interpreting a contract is to go back to see the party's intentions. Exactly. Particularly in reinsurance, where it's uh, equal parties negotiating uh, the coverage in each situation. You've, you've mentioned asbestos, you've mentioned environmental, and do you take any lessons away from those, either on, uh, with, with respect to uh, hand claims handling or, or how insurers may respond, any, anything? I mean, do, does the past help us predict the future in any way? I think in this instance it might. <clears throat> the way that the insurance industry and the reinsurance industry evolved to handle claims that were unanticipated <clears throat> may provide us somewhat of a roadmap in certain situations for anticipating claim for the resolution of claims that will be coming as a result of the virus. Where that will take us, we don't know yet. But uh, precedent in the industry is sort of like in the law, too. You try to look at it to give yourself a roadmap as to what the intent was of the parties at the time. You, you mentioned public policy. How are you anticipating public policy to play a role here? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. One of the first thoughts about that was would probably be the virus exclusion in most standard policies for business interruption. Um, was this against public policy? Was this unanticipated by the purchaser of insurance? as well as the issuer of the policy, we don't know. But again, um, there, are a, there are a lot of lawsuits and litigation in this area has already started. So exactly where that will, where that will end up, where that will play out, uh, 
is going to be a big unknown.